Welcome to TradeTheNBA.com. This is John's reports for the 14th of May. Well, that was a nice continuation as we expected because we saw no turnaround whatsoever in our uh, green and or red uh, within the falling shake. And we talked about this too. When you have that uh, yellow or gold as I sometimes refer to it, but this is actually the yellow line from the shakeout. When it's below blue, uh, which it was the other day when we were talking about it, um, you're not going to get a turnaround. Same thing, still in place right now. We're slightly positive, but off of a huge dip, uh, relatively speaking, dramatic, but not overly dramatic given the fact that we're, you know, when this was back at, you know, 1400, 1300, you get that kind of move, you'd be like, yeah, okay, but now with 3000, it's not quite the same impact. Um, nonetheless, it's good, complete reset, and we're still uh, falling. Still haven't dipped below the red line yet. Uh, still a little ways to go. We're only in minus 54 on that one. Uh, someone was asking me where this might end. Well, that's an easy one. You just go over here to your extreme histogram. We filled in all those. You got these little dips right here below the red line. And we can take a look at that. It was right after, right before the breakout move. Uh, so the low right there, 27.26. Yeah, it's still a ways to go. So um, that would be your potential low move. Or somewhere right around that uh, yellow line of 27.35. So th that's a possibility. The reality is, is that you're just going to have some fluctuation in between. I think, well, it can, particularly with declines, you can just go straight down, straight down. But usually that there's a fight back. Some people want to cover because they've taken significant gains. We're seeing that short-term buyers have been active in this, but uh, they're getting zero help from uh, the bigger boys, which is why it's only lasting short period. And so when I see this, a lot of it to me is just short covering is becomes the buyer. Um, but we can see that shorts are still activating. Uh, this is an interesting one because if it pivots here below where the previous one uh, was, then I would think that maybe shorts might be running out of it. But the fact that uh, some may even be adding into this setup is interesting because th if you hold on and get back above that 50% line right here, uh, let's put that value up, 44, you could potentially end up with a short cover rally, which will boost things right back up uh, pretty quick because that will be a, a swift move, just like it is when everyone's running for the exits and nobody can get out. Uh, those kind of setups. Of course, you've got the tensions with oil, you've got uh, the China retaliation, blah, 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 blah. Um, it's all much to do about nothing. Euro remaining in its uh, range, but it's going to continue to rise if there's more uh, tensions and concerns about U.S. growth going forward. That would definitely be a bonus to the Euro. Um, of course, with the Red exit parties leading in that that could create a whole new wave of uh, uncertainty that could drive things uh, back and around. So there's still plenty of uncertainty around the euro. We were expecting a pop from uh, gold, and geez, it did exactly that. Uh, nice pop right there. This gets busy ugly because we were starting it when we were beginning the fade, and we were talking about right here we had this. A nice little buy configuration off the solid crossover, We're still below the negative 13, but as I pointed out, without that steel reset, meaning uh, coming below the red uh, and back above, then you've got a problem because otherwise it has to stay above the negative 13.5 uh, in order to maintain its uh, support uh, overall. And what happened was that lasted just a couple of bars and then immediately you got that rejection right here that's a beautiful whenever you see those lovely rejections like that it's usually pretty clean uh, in this particular case it was pretty close to exactly the same spot where uh, the entry point would be um, and we never really got a nice swift uh, this was the closest you get to where the steel dipping below cyan and then coming back above is slightly begins to be bullish but that's even after the short had already started and there was no orange uh, reset underneath so you were just in continuation mode which is what it did at that particular point you can just follow it's like okay well how long is it before i get my steel reset oh yeah right over here where my x2 show up and that gave us a decent pump from the 23 percent all the way above the uh, 50 percent there before a uh, clean doc spread let me just start to expand this now because we don't need to be that small and you begin to see it clear get into the broader expanded range but again same situation you can follow that steel 
doesn't reset, doesn't reset, then finally does right there where you get the nice X. That one leads to a move to the 100%. Slight retrace, and then you started doing a series of little ABC moves there. We've got plenty of uh, bounce step uh, moves in between. And uh, here, once the decline started off of this DOC spread, we, you know, this is another one I love to talk about. Okay, so this one was above zero. Uh, that shows strength going above there, so you're less inclined to believe that that's going to give you a sustained move. But the second one, making a higher high on lower red DOC and right at the zero point. And when that one rolls over right there, that's the one to jump on hard. And sure enough, that produced a move that went from 100 back to the zero. Um, and then it bounced a little bit before creating a nice little buy configuration right about uh, just before that red change here, that cross of the shake up, the yellow above magenta, in this case uh, it was almost three plus points, which we look for like two and a quarter is usually enough to get things rolling. And uh, that just propelled it all the way up to the top right there. So uh, I think there was some really exciting uh, range activity. I mean, you're talking about we've moved from, you know, the 29 back to, you know, low as the 2800 uh, range. Uh, right here down at the bottom, I mean, 2802. Uh, that's, a, that's a decent move. Uh, we expected this volatility at the start. I tried to prepare everyone for it. Uh, that's always a tough one because people will say, well, I don't know. And it's like uh, you can see the, the buildup of it and then it just explodes, and particularly to the downside because, you know, as I've always pointed out, markets do fall much faster than they rise, and that certainly. Uh, um, shows itself as big, dramatic uh, swing moves, but it also creates within them usually pretty large buy cover return momentum plays where shorts just basically they've covered over and they just sit back and they let price, you know, just lift under no pressure and then they attack again just like we do when we see these key elements where it's like, okay, we can see that they just don't have enough juice and then boom, you get the beautiful DOC spread. And it's like, okay, I can jump on this one and attack it as soon as I see that separation right there and the red falling. It's like, wow, that's just free money. So we'll keep uh, exploring that. Um, as always, though, I'm uh, continuing to do some adjusted programming, so I wasn't uh, posting much as far as the charts because it seemed pretty straightforward when we weren't getting much of that reset. That's just I just kind of let that percolate and just lower stops accordingly. Um, it just depends on how broad a range you're going with it. Either way, uh, if something new pops up or is interesting, I will certainly let you know. As always, though, trade well. We'll talk in later.